the World War II movie is the genre that just doesn't seem to go away. From the early years of the war itself, stories about the conflict have come out in the form of books, movies, TV shows, documentaries, and probably a dozen other formats I can't think of right now. It's a genre that's so big you can break it down into sub-genres. The romances like Casablanca, the action movies like Where Eagles Dare or Sisu, the psychological dramas like Enemy at the Gates or Fury, the sprawling epics like The Longest Day. With so many movies over such a long period, the movies themselves are products of their time. Something like In Which We Serve from 1942 or The Dan Busters from 1955 are very much products of the stiff upper lip cliches of the time. Whereas Schindler's List has a very 1990s level anxiety and concern about self-worth. Or Fury from 2014 has a very antsy and anxious 2010s vibe. Which for me makes The English Patient a very interesting movie. Made in 1996, it's a movie that feels very consciously old-fashioned, very stylized and mannered. It feels deliberately designed to sit alongside 1940s efforts like Mrs. Miniver or A Matter of Life and Death or, again, Casablanca, than it does against more naturalistic 90s efforts like Saving Private Ryan. That's made it a divisive film. It has a certain type of vibe and whether you can live with that vibe, that sometimes exaggerated delivery that the movie employs, both in terms of acting and art and direction, kind of determines whether whether you'll enjoy it or not. On the one hand, this is a movie that won nine Oscars, including Best Picture, Best Director and Best Actress. On the other, it inspired an episode of Seinfeld, the biggest sitcom of the 90s, where one of the main characters couldn't admit that she hated the movie. The film opens during World War II, with Count Laszlo Almazi, played by Rafe Fiennes, flying across the North African desert, being shot down and horrifically burnt. We then jump forward to the final days of the war in Italy, with the Count unable to look after himself due to his injuries, being cared for by a nurse played by Juliette Binoche. Slowly and in flashback, the story of what happened to the Count in Egypt emerges. So back in the late 1930s, Laszlo Almazi is working on archaeological expeditions in the Egyptian desert, where he meets Catherine Clifton, another member of the expedition. She's married to a third member of the team, but despite that, her and the Count fall in love as they work together. Romances essentially succeed or fail based on how much the central couple are credible. And fortunately, the English patient has a great central couple. We've got Rafe Fiennes, who was most famous in the 90s, worked on films such as Schindler's List and Quiz Show with Steven Spielberg. And then we've got Kristen Scott Thomas, also most famous in the 90s in films such as Mission Impossible, Four Weddings and a Funeral. This pair have enough chemistry to create this credible sense of mutual obsession here. It feels very emotionally all-consuming, so on balance, I like the flashback structure. It allows time for contemplation on what happened, allows us to get away from this sense of obsession that the two create. I don't really care much for the 1945 characters. I'm confused why Binoche got the Oscar and not Kristen Scott Thomas, but I did like Willem Dafoe's character, who brings more context and and consequences to some of the choices that the Count made. So The English Patient has a great cast and a great central couple as well. Another element I really enjoy is the desert. Uh, so desert movies are in themselves almost a subgenre of Western cinema at this point. Stuff like Death on the Nile, Lawrence of Arabia, Ice Cold in Alex, and The English Patient fits in here. These vast empty landscapes that make the personal relationships that happen in them all the more intimate. It really focuses us, I think, on the two central characters. Even in the Cairo scenes, it feels like a two-person show. The third thing for me that makes this movie great is the music. Rewatching recently, it surprised me how much of the movie is soundtracked with what are presumably authentic 1940s tunes, and how Catherine says that Almazi is singing all the time, which I don't think we actually see Almazi Marzi sing until quite late uh, in the movie. Ray Fiennes plays the Count in a very earnest and serious and almost childlike way. I wonder how much of the music in the movie is in universe as such, and whether we're supposed to think that the music is happening inside Al Marzi's head, if it's somehow his internal monologue, by which I mean, is the music a 
Rafe Fiennes plays the Count in a very restrained way, in a very self-disciplined way, and I wonder if the extent of the music is supposed to somehow represent his internal struggles to maintain this facade of seriousness. Catherine at one point says that Almazi is always singing, and this is just not the case for the character we see on screen. I wonder, are we seeing objective reality in these flashbacks, or are we seeing Almazi kind of tidy it up? Would Catherine's version of the flashbacks be wildly different to what we're seeing here? So for me, the two leads, the visuals, the music, all work together to immerse the viewer in this romance. And generally, romances are not my thing, but The English Patient is so well constructed that I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Hey, you watched my entire video. Thanks for watching. See you again sometime.